How's it going everyone? Welcome back. Today we are picking up the transmission for the drift truck. Now there has been a slight change of plans for, for the transmission. I will explain it once I get the transmission, but I am running late. I was supposed to pick the transmission up an hour ago and I have not picked it up. I haven't even left and it's an hour away. So I'm going to talk about it once I get it. So let's just, just leave. Ah, uh, shit, I have to let the dog out. Can you shit a little faster, please? The slowest walking dog I've ever had to deal with. Come on! I gotta go. Bye, Axel. Come on, high five. That is my brother's dog, by the way. I didn't just get a random dog. That bad boy currently does not run. At least last time I tried it, it didn't run. Yeah, so these batteries are dead. And I can't get batteries for it right now because drift truck. So we're taking the Miata to get the transmission. Problem is the transmission doesn't fit in a Miata unless you take out the passenger seat. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. Much better looking little tow rig right here. That took a little bit longer than expected. So, uh, yeah, come on. Now I'm even more late, so uh, that's just great. Save me all the money for tolls. And it feels weird driving with no passenger seat. I'm starving. Let's get this bad boy out of here. SR20 transmissions are kind of heavy, so I'm gonna try my best. So, here we are. She's dirty, but she has a really nice shifter, and she goes into every gear. She's in good condition, relatively so. Now, you heard me right. This isn't a CD09. This is an SR20 transmission. Originally, we were gonna go with a CD09 transmission because it's six speed, shifts really nicely, and because it can hold an infinite amount of power, pretty much. The problem is that I couldn't find one and they're really expensive. They're easily three times the price as SR20 transmissions. The conversion kit for them is also twice as expensive. Uh, it's just, I didn't really have the funds to go with a transmission that wasn't necessary. The SR20 transmission shifts really nicely and it holds a decent amount of power. It can hold like 400 foot pounds of torque reliably. So that's more than this engine will put out stock and that's about what I want to put out with some boost. So it's also a lot smaller than the CD09, it's lighter than the CD09 and it's just easier to find, cheaper. In order to bolt this SR20 transmission onto the 1UZ, we're getting an adapter plate along with a custom flywheel and a custom clutch from Collins Adapters, which I tried working with them trying to get like a sponsorship for this build and stuff. They just completely ignored me. It was kind of annoying. So now what I want to do is, we don't have the adapter yet, so I can't pull it to the, the engine, but I do want to kind of put it in place, mock it up. I'll, I'll clean it up, then we'll mock it up, and then I'll paint it. Oh, hell yeah, guys. Another section of my floor ruined from cleaning greasy shit. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about it staining my face. This transmission was very dirty. Now that the transmission is clean and not as miserable to work with, we're gonna go ahead, put the engine in the truck, get it exactly where we want it, and then mock up the transmission up to this bell housing, like a, like a 
two inch space between the transmission and the bell housing just to make sure that the, the transmission will fit where we want the engine to fit. Once we know that, we'll pull the transmission back out, paint it, and then we will build the motor mounts. Really, as long as the transmission fits in the transmission tunnel, that's all we need to know to mount the motor. We aren't gonna build the transmission mounts until the transmission is on the motor and bolted up, obviously, but we can build the motor mounts before that. Now, since this is hopefully the last time we were putting the engine in and out before building the motor mounts, we have to clean up the frame. So once we get the engine in there, we can kind of tack up motor mounts where we want it without having to pull the engine back out. Clean up time. Well, we got the engine in here. We got it sitting in a, in a place, but the problem is I don't know what height to put it at. Cause I want to put the engine as high as I possibly can and still have the transmission clear the transmission tunnel. But I don't know what height that is because I don't have the transmission on the back of the engine. I wanted to be able to build the motor mounts without having the transmission on there, but I just can't. It's not worth building motor mounts and then, you know, screwing something up, having the transmission not fit properly, and then have to redo them. So I'm just gonna wait until I get the adapter plate and then I can bolt the transmission onto the, the One UZ and then I can build all the mounts. Probably a better idea anyway. In the meanwhile, we are still gonna go ahead, paint the transmission, so by the time we get the transmission plate, it's nice and cured and it won't chip or flake or do any of that. Just a nice little aluminum to make it look nice and clean. I was gonna do gloss black, but I decided that was too much work, so. Let's paint her up and then I don't know what else. Ta-da! I got myself a brand new transmission from Nissan. Ha, huh. just kidding. I don't know why more people don't paint their transmissions. It looks so good, it's so brand new, and now it's nice and clean and glossy, so it'll be easy to keep clean. And it's also gonna be easy to see if it leaks, which is awesome. I'm so white, I glow. While I was waiting for paint to dry, I went ahead and put in the second. This came with an ISIS, otherwise known as ISR short throw shifter. It's crazy how, Short throws are on this thing. It's first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, and reverse. The short gear throw will be really nice because in order to get it, the shift knob in the right position, we have to make a longer shift thing because it's a truck, obviously. So your shifter is like way, way up high. I can't wait until the transmission's in there, but you can hold the knob and shift it around. I think that is pretty much it for today. The goal for the next video is to get all the brakes done, get the brake lines wired up, and the, the system bled so the brakes are working. If we can get it to that point, then I want to drive it. I want to flat tow it around the uh, industrial lot around here and just kind of drive it. Make sure that the uh, suspension feels okay, the steering feels okay, and the brakes work. I'm going to be honest, I kind of wish I had a helper. A lot of these YouTubers I see have helpers like Adam and Alberto. I have a lot to do on this drift truck and the fact that I have to do it all myself really gets me overwhelmed. I, <laughs> There's a lot to do and it takes a long time, but I'm gonna work my absolute hardest to get it all done as fast as I can. Just keep in mind that I don't have anybody helping me and that I'm doing literally everything myself. It takes longer when I don't have anybody helping me, so. But it's more rewarding because I did it all myself. I know exactly what will break, if it breaks, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna be all awesome. Also, if you wanna help the drift truck build progress, if you wanna help it get finished by the middle of next month, go in the link in the description and buy yourself a pack of air fresheners. They are for pre-sale. If you want one, there's only like 50 left, so if you want one, you have to hop on it now. Purchasing a set of air fresheners really, really does help, so 
I appreciate anyone who does that. Thank you very much. Or you can check out my Patreon. Or you can do nothing and just watch the videos. That works too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think of the new transmission, the SR20 transmission. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video, dislike the video, yada, yada, yada. Do all the normal stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.